So the eventual release of the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III is just around the corner with any bloody luck at least. And I'm as giddy and gay as a Nigel Farage upon hearing of the burning down of a migrant detention centre. But as it's not quite here yet, I thought I would gird my loins by returning to the excellent predecessor from 2020, one of my favourite smartphones of last year, in fact the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. Especially as you may well find some great deals on this wee bugger here with the impending arrival of its successor. So here's my full Sony Xperia 5 Mark II re-review for anyone who missed my original verdict last year and to see if I'm still head over heels for this huge tall glass member. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now Sony's design hasn't really changed up at all for the Xperia 5 Mark III, so we already know what to expect from this one. A tall bugger with pleasingly slender girth, making it a great fit in the hand. Sadly, it is still only available in black and blue, despite all of my hopes that Sony would release more vibrant colours right here in Blighty. But I've got to say the Xperia 5 Mark II is still in great nick. There are a few little scuffs around the bottom edge and that is it after several months of abuse. That Gorilla Glass 6 finish front and back has really proved its worth. And you know that this thing has bounced off a fair few hard surfaces in those past few months as well because it's the slipperiest f***ing thing I've ever held in my entire life. It's literally as if somebody has taken a slab of lard and rubbed it all over a calippo. It's even ended up in the bath and the sink a couple of times as well but thankfully it is full IP68 water and dust resistance so no troubles there at all. My only other major complaint besides the slipperiness is the sheer number of buttons slapped onto that right edge. So as well as the standard uh, power button which has the built-in fingerprint sensor and the volume rocker you've also got a dedicated Google Assistant button and a friggin camera shutter button beneath that. And at the time I reviewed the Xperia 5 Mark II I didn't really find it much of a problem I never accidentally knocked the Google Assistant button for instance so that wasn't really an issue but since then we've also emerged from lockdown and that means I've been going out in the car quite a bit. I've got a little clamp in the car to stick the phone in to use it as a sat nav while I'm driving and you bet uh, of course as soon as you stick it in that clamp many of those buttons are being simultaneously mushed and the phone just goes absolutely bananas. And on top of that the frictionless design means that the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II does tend to slip a bit even in that clamp at maximum tightness so of course that means that then all of a sudden the Google Assistant button's being pressed, the volume rockers are being nudged, all kinds of stuff. And yeah I realise that's quite a specific problem to me but if you've got a similar sort of clamp that you use in your car or at your desk or anything then just bear in mind you're probably going to have to rethink your strategy. Oh and while I'm in full on gripe mode as well that bottom speaker on the Xperia 5 Mark II is basically just an open gash which means that all kinds of grit and dirt and filth gets in there, you've got to get in there with a pin and try and clean it out occasionally. Now the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II was sadly riddled with quite a few weird little bugs when I first reviewed it but the majority of these have since been exterminated and thankfully no new and notable chicanery has cropped up. There's just the one persistent bug left and that is that sometimes I'll pull the phone out of my pocket, go to use the fingerprint sensor and I'll see a little message saying it's been locked for too many unlock attempts. Not sure what's going on there but it's especially annoying on the Xperia 5 Mark II as there's no face unlock. The Xperia 5 Mark II comes absolutely stacked with handy features though like the proper one-handed mode which is definitely useful as reaching to the top of that super tall display can be tricky. While the 21x9 finish is perfect for split screen multitasking with a pair of apps. But undoubtedly one of the best features still is Sony's fresh gaming mode which makes the Xperia 5 Mark II one of my favourite go-to smartphones for gaming on the move. The game enhancer is overflowing like a well-clogged toilet with all kinds of useful tools. You got the power boost feature if you're blasting through the likes of Genshin Impact on maxed out settings and I only saw a couple of little stutters with this active even during a fairly lengthy session. You've also got the focus sense to prevent you from being disturbed and best of all that EHS power control mode. Now this allows you to keep the Xperia 5 Mark II plugged in all afternoon long if you just fancy doing a good bit of PUBG, Call of Duty, whatever, can't be bothered with work or real life. And what it does is it basically keeps the phone powered up but it doesn't charge the battery simultaneously thus preventing more heat build up and stopping the phone from throttling. So great performance all day long, supoib. And Call of Duty fans even have support for Sony's DualShock controller as well if you happen to suck at the touch controls. And the performance of the Xperia 5 Mark II is faultless. That Snapdragon 865 chipset is still a beefcake that can handle pretty much anything out there. So don't worry too much about waiting for the Mark III with its Snapdragon 888 Smart. And also that gorgeous cinema-wide OLED screen is perfect for giving a wide clear view of the action. There are no selfie orifices or notches to get in the way 
and this gives you a wide scope as well so no sneaky buggers can creep up on you while you're gaming. You've got full 120Hz refresh rate support here on the Xperia 5 Mark II. It can even simulate 240Hz with some very clever software shenanigans. And this phone also boasts rapid touch sensitivity as well. You can actually manually customize the sensitivity of that display in those game settings so you can get it exactly to your likings. You've got absolutely no excuse whatsoever for having your brains blown out by a bloody 12 year old on their school holidays unless you've been hitting the scotch again. And that six inch screen is of course already marvelous for a good bit of Netflix action too. I definitely don't miss the 4K resolution of Sony's flagship phone because the compact finish of the Xperia 5 Mark II means that Full HD Plus visuals are perfectly crisp while colors are proper punchy. And the brightness thankfully proves strong enough for a good bit of outdoor play even when the sun is blasting down on your baldy bonts. And Sony has, of course, as always, absolutely pumped this thing full of audio smart. So that stereo speaker setup for one, works an absolute charm when you don't happen to have any headphones to hand. But the good news is that Sony has retained that headphone jack up top as well, which these days is rarer than a Panda's stiffy, certainly for phones around this sort of price point. You've got high-res audio support, of course, when you're all wired up, else you've got a good bit of LDAC action, Aptex and all of that, plus Sony's own DSEE Ultimate, that's the Digital Sound Enhancement Engine, for rescuing crappy compressed tracks. Now, Sony has stuffed a 4,000 milliamp capacity battery into the Xperia 5 Mark II, and I found that, yeah, there's the occasional day where I run out of charge just before I hit the hair. Usually, that's when I've been using it as a sat-nav for a couple of hours. I've been doing lots of Skype and some really heavy-duty stuff. Otherwise, most days, I end up staggering into bed, getting all tucked up with Teddy, with at least 20 to 30% left in the tank. And yeah, sadly, there's no support for wireless charging here on the Xperia 5 Mark II, unlike a lot of rivals around this sort of price point. But at least you do get that adaptive charging feature, which means that you can leave the Xperia 5 Mark II plugged in all night long. It won't overcharge and therefore potentially balk the battery over time. And that's uh, just as well because you don't have the fast charge capabilities of, again, some rivals at this sort of price. And last up, while you don't have the same glorious point and shoot ease of use as something like the Google Pixel 5, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II does a bang up job of capturing every glorious part of your wonderful life, assuming you're actually doing more these days than just occasionally scuttling off to Tesco to stock up on bog roll and Jaffa cakes. And that's because the Xperia 5 Mark II sports the same triple lens Zeiss setup as the Xperia 1 Mark II, giving you the ultra wide angle and telephoto alternatives to that capable primary shooter for extra flexibility. And yet, yeah, they're all 12 megapixel lenses, and sure, 12 meg sounds a bit arse compared with the 48, 64, or even 108 meg lenses that you get on a lot of smartphones, even budget efforts. But remember, it's not the number of megapixels that counts, it's what you do with them. My test shots still look great when they are viewed back on a monitor. They're packed with detail and they boast natural looking colors, even when I'm up against strong outdoor lighting or ambient indoor environments. The Xperia 5 Mark II also impresses for low light photography, snapping a series of shots across a range of exposures and blending them together to get surprisingly bright pics without much grain. Thankfully, you do still get a realistic reproduction when you swap to the other lenses as well, although the ultra wide angle shooter isn't as impressive as rivals from Oppo and Vivo from 2021, with the usual fisheye distortion all too obvious. Meanwhile, that telephoto effort can get you closer to the action when needed. Great for touristy pics now that we're actually allowed to travel more than 10 feet from our bloody front door. But I've got to say, one of the major advantages of the Xperia 5 Mark II and all of Sony's smartphones compared with a lot of the rivals around this sort of price point is the excellent eye autofocus combined with the burst shot feature. And this can capture up to 20 pics a second, which is great when you're trying to shoot active subjects who are off their tits on ice cream and Haribo. That's for any photographers who want more precise controls where you're definitely well served by the Xperia smartphones because you've got that photo pro mode with full raw support. You can fiddle with all of the major settings just as you would on a DSLR camera and see the results right there on the screen. And for anyone who's not quite pro, maybe just an amateur photographer or wants to get into it as a hobby, well, the good news is that Sony will be bringing a simpler, more easy to get to grips with version of the Photo Pro mods to the Xperia 5 Mark II, most likely when the Xperia 5 Mark III is finally released. I still get really good mileage out of the Cinema Pro mode as well, which serves up full control over the ISO levels, the white balance and so on, while also giving you a selection of filters to piddle about with, which completely change the mood of your home movies. And the slow motion results at 4K resolution at 120 frames per second are simply stunning. This is all definitely great stuff if you're trying to make it as a wanky indie movie director or whatever. Otherwise, you can just use a good old standard video mode, which does a great job of serving up good looking footage with clear audio and solid image stabilization. And then last up, yeah, there's that 8 megapixel selfie shooter, which sadly still is about as impressive as a tadpole's fart. 
I'm still finding that quite often my photo results are a bit soft or grainy or just a bit poo, especially when I'm shooting indoors. I got a lot of blurry fuzzy snaps which I had to chuck no matter how still I tried to keep my hand. And yeah, I'm even talking about it like breakfast time here before it even had a sniff of scotch. So selfie fans may want to look elsewhere, but everyone else should be more than impressed by the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. It's brilliant for pretty much everything you could possibly think of doing with a smartphone, including, of course, watching movies, chilling with some tunes, a bit of gaming action. And selfie cam aside, I really get on with the optics very well, especially the cinema pro mode, because I am a bit of a wanker like that. I do like shooting ponty looking video. So anyway, a few little gripes aside, I do really like the Xperia 5 Mark II. I'm looking forward to checking out the Xperia 5 Mark III, which doesn't look like a massive evolution, basically just a fresh new chipset. Hopefully you've worked out some of the little kinks uh, with the Mark II version as well. So stay tuned for an in-depth unboxing and review of that hopefully imminently. If you've been using the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II or any of the other Sony flagship stuff, it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely arse rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.